Welcome to The Short Score, your weekly update of rope and news from around the industry, where you can find the latest on the sport from the pro rodeo ranks to the jackpot world. I'm Taylor Vollen, and I'm your host. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Short Score. It's your host, Taylor Vollen. Happy Thanksgiving week. If you're actually getting a break this week, I hope you're enjoying it so far and taking it easy. And I hope you're ready for some yummy food on Thursday. I know I'm pumped, as embarrassing as that is to admit. We are what? Two weeks out from the 2023 NFR? It's coming so fast. So today on The Short Score, we're bringing you another NFR rookie. This time I'm introducing y'all to Cole Curry. Cole is a 23-year-old from Mississippi who has healed all year for Marcus Terrio. Cole has qualified, like I said, for his first ever NFR in just his third year on the Pro Rodeo Trail. But Cole was one of those kids that's been handy with the rope since he was young, and I'm sure much of the Southeast isn't really that surprised that Cole and Marcus have made the NFR finally. Today, Cole and I talk about his upbringing, how he really got to the NFR, and what he's looking forward to the most about running one in the Thomas and Mac. This episode is brought to you by Sentinel. No one knows your horse's thoughts, emotions, and moods as well as you. Just as in touch as you are with their personality, Sentinel's expert nutritionists are in tune with their dietary needs. With feeds in the form of extruded nuggets to provide exceptional nutrition and formulas made for every life stage and activity level, Sentinel's wide choice of carefully crafted feeds makes it easy to find the perfect fit to better your horse's health. Learn more at feedsentinel.com slash score. That's feedsentinel.com slash score. Let's start with the basics. When did you first get into rodeo and roping? Uh, Definitely just as long as I can remember, Mm -hmm. for sure. Kind of a family deal? Yeah, my family have an order buying business with cattle, and they've always went to a bunch of amateur rodeos, and my family rodeoed. Mm -hmm. Was making the NFR kind of a forever dream of yours since you were a little kid? Yeah, absolutely. It was. When, and this might be kind of a harder question, but when do you feel like you realized it was something that you could actually do? Uh, well, I've always probably thought I was better than I really was, <laughs> I guess. But I don't know. I, I got moved to a pretty high number in the USDRC at a young age, mm-hmm. and that's really all I did was focus on roping right so I, in, in my mind i would say i, I always thought i could mm-hmm. do you feel like having that confidence helped you make your first nfr at all uh you do have to believe in yourself but once you get out there a bunch of reality hits on how hard it is Tell me a little bit more about that i'm curious what it looked like this year to make the finals and maybe some things that you learned while doing that this was my third year going out there Mm -hmm. and everybody thinks their first year that they have a chance but very small percentage of people do right and it it's a lot that you think you can prepare for but there's no way to prepare for it until you go do it Mm -hmm. or being on the road and just like you barely get to practice any of the four months over the summer and you'll run one steer and drive 10 hours, run one more steer. A lot of it is mental. You mm-hmm. have to forget about what happened and make the best of what's coming. Right. So you said you've been out for three years or so now? Yep, this was my third year. So does that mean anything more to you or make it more exciting that you made it? I mean, that's pretty early, I feel like, from the outside looking in to make the finals. I mean, does that change it for you at all or mean anything more yeah well this year it just like this winter we had a really good winter Mm -hmm. this year everything kind of worked out in our favor 
I would say, to make the finals. Right. And I guess we we took it a lot more serious when we, I don't know how much we won. I'm going to say we won probably 30 some 40000 this winter. Mm-hmm. That was a great, great boost. Right. Do you feel like you had to make any adjustments in your open since, say, like your first year with your permit or your rookie year? Yes, I have. A lot. <laughs> well, tell me about that a little bit. Well, I, from going to a bunch of amateur radios, which you kind of like to win first or second to make any money, so I would always take a very fast shot. Mm-hmm. And then over the summer, you have to heal them very fast, but you also have to heal dang near every steer this turn for money. Right. So I, I've had to really work on my consistency, and even if the shot do, is not there, I've had to really train myself to really not throw until I is a high percentage shot, but it's really got to be fast also. Mm-hmm. So I know you said that you guys had a good winter, but there at the end of the year, you guys were in the top 15, but you know, still in bubble territory. Kind of tell yep. me about what that was like and maybe what was going through your head that last, those last couple weeks of the season. Well, it was definitely stressful. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess it, a guy like me always just, just wants a chance to make it. Mm-hmm. And kind of had to just kind of forget about all what was going on and just be sure to rip the deer by two feet. Right. Okay, probably the silliest question, but what does it mean to you to finally make it? Well, it gives me a little self-confidence. I actually did what I was, I've been trying to do my whole life, I would say. Right. But I guess everybody asks, how, how does it feel to make it? But it, it really hasn't kicked in, but, and now the pressure is doing good at the finals since I've made it. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel like in this sport, it's always going to be something more that you have to prove. You've overall just had a big year. I mean, you made the finals for the first time. You got married. I mean, has it just been yeah. kind of almost overwhelming or like surreal feeling? It, it, def- it definitely has. We have been very, very busy. Mm-hmm. I bet. Kind of tell me what it's looked like these last, what, two months or last month getting ready to go out to Vegas. Well, we, we've we actually been going somewhere about every other weekend as far as amateur rodeos, a jackpot, and then... Just the last, I would say, two weeks, we really settled down, got it home, and really, like Marcus sat there reading up at his house. We're, we've been practicing a few times there, and then Caleb Driggers has done us a real solid by inviting us to come practice with him, and oh, awesome. he's given us a bunch of pointers on what we need to do and what we need to expect in that building. That's cool. Okay, so Marcus... Tell me a little bit about that partnership. Well, it, it's got its uh, pros and cons, I would say. <laughs> and you guys have pretty much roped together your entire lives, right? Uh, yeah, I would say probably the last five years, four or five years, we roped together. About gotcha. If we went somewhere and we were there, we would rope. Mm-hmm. How long do you feel like it's been a dream for you guys to make the finals together? The well, last year was the first year we really took it. Like that. That's really what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. We we dedicated it as a team to do what it took to make. What kind of support do you feel like you had getting to the finals? Your family back you pretty good, I'm assuming. They backed me 100. percent I definitely could not have done it without their backing. How important now that you you know been there, done that kind of deal? How important is it to have such a good, solid home team? It is most important because it. I mean it take so much money and trucks and trailers and just support in general mm-hmm. to, to make it. And with, I, I couldn't imagine doing it without it. Right. Okay, kind of switching gears, let's talk horses. Tell me about the horses that you rode this year to make it to the finals. I rode a gray horse all winter and the majority of the summer. I call Repo. I bought him from Daniel Barton in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And he was my number one horse all year, and he got hurt in Ellensburg. And then I, Colby Payne let me ride his good bay horse at a few rodeos, which 
really helped me out because I did well at the rodeo. Mm -hmm. And then I tried a horse in Oklahoma from Nick Rowland. I rode that horse at Pasadena and Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. I bought him. So that was my horse. Have you decided what you're going to ride that first round at the finals? It, well, I just picked up my gray horse from oh, good. Josh Harvey there at Outlaw Equine, mm-hmm. which they've done an outstanding job getting him. He's probably in the best shape of his life. Awesome. And I'm I'm actually, today is going to be the first day I'm going to run steer on him. You're thinking that if so it, it goes was, right, that'll be... Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to gonna hold up. It'll, it'll either be him or the horse I bought from Nick Rowland. Gotcha. Have you, I'm assuming you have, but have you really started to picture running that first steer in the Thomas and Mac? Yes. Yes, I have. Right with Bubba Buckaloo, and I got him to send me a few of his runs just so I could kind of visualize. Because we've been practicing, and it's really hard for a healer on when to leave. Everybody says that you need to leave through the gates, but just like practicing, if the steer doesn't start with the gates, I'm getting a little bit too good of a start. I just wanted to see, visualize some of the runs on how the steers are leaving and where he's standing in the box, his healer, just like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, this might be kind of hard too. I mean, and I guess I could imagine what your answer will be, but if you could pick or had to pick one thing that you're looking forward to most about Vegas or when you first get there, whatever, what do you think it is? Uh, definitely hope, hoping to heal the steer for 30000 <laughs>